All right, welcome to another robot adventures video. Come back. Children, dumbasses, stupid people. Do not watch this video. This video is not made for you. This video is made for only people who like my videos and uh, have an interest in the thing that I'm going to talk about. Well, Ruben, we don't know what you're going to talk about unless we watch a video. Well, it's kind of a catch-22, isn't it? Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I mentioned that I was going to get the the laser. And, um, yeah, because I wanted to have the laser printer and a laser engraver. The laser here... Uh, only cost 30 bucks off of uh, AliExpress um, DZT, I think, store. I think that's what it was. Um, and I bought this the same time I uh, bought the, the printer, the Flying Bear uh, P902. Um, and I think I mentioned, I'm pretty sure I did because it was an important point. Uh, the reason why I got this Flying Bear was because of this piece right here. And... Um, this sits uh, horizontal uh, and moves like brr, brr, brr. Um, Looking at um, the, I, I did a Google search for MakerBot um, carriage, and if you want to get a instead of a plastic carriage, you want to get this kind of aluminum metal carriage on the MakerBot. That one piece is going to cost you about a hundred bucks. Um, this whole frame cost me, the whole printer, 3D printer, cost me 300 bucks. Um, so I like this carriage um, because I think I can put a whole bunch of stuff on there. And I have plans to, well, now plan number one was put the laser on there. Um, also, I think because of this uh, hole... It's not a hole, Reuben. <laughs> this cutout. Um, I can put a bunch of other stuff on there. So I've seen um, the 3DS Ways um, 3 in, uh, 1 out, uh, multiple uh, hot end. And uh, there's also the, the Cyclops and some other things. And you can just, I think, if I can make a mount for it, you can just drop that on there, and then just have a have a lot of different things mounted onto this this um, carriage. And so I need to make the mounts. So <clears throat> so you won't see me laser engraving today, but um, yeah, I just thought maybe. If, somebody knew some hey well you what you do is you get this mount um the laser is uh pretty small it's uh 400 uh the wavelength is what 400 uh some 405 um nanometers is that right wavelength and um oh it says right there on the side um and the watt power is 500 milli milliwatts. And, uh, yeah. So, it's that laser. And, um, yeah, I, it comes with the little circuit board here. And, um, I was like, okay, well, I need a, I need to make, I need to print something out for this thing. So I can attach this um, to the frame, right? And um, I wanted uh, an attachment point, so I went out and I picked up uh, this piece here. And this piece is the... Oh, there was a camera. There it is. It is the bottom, or it is the attachment point for... Um, a little wheel, <laughs> but it matched uh, the 
the size so um, yeah, it looks like it fits on there perfectly right there so I just have to do a little 3d print of this thing and then I can mount that onto onto the frame and I think I'm gonna mount it on top there somewhere like that um, using some of the extra T nuts that I got and um, yeah to test so that that's some that's a project I gotta finish and do stuff like that um, so getting this thing getting this uh, carriage off was um, a little bit of a trick um, and maybe not on yours but on mine the the extruder the this thing here was uh, pretty well on there it had two of these um, Allen uh, screws on there three millimeter Allen screws and um, this one came off easily this one was well not actually this one but the other one was stripped so I couldn't use the Allen key on it to remove it so I had to um, fortunately enough there was a little bit of uh, a little bit of wiggle uh, be the, between the attachment point and the then this uh, aluminum um, direct feed extruder the uh, direct feed housing for the yeah for the extruder um, so I was able just to get a little bit of wiggle and then uh, wi uh, unscrew it with my fingers so I was kind of lucky with that um, and the uh, if you've seen the uh, rip wrap um, the rip wrap uh, wiki then when you see this uh, mark 8 type um, setup you'll notice that the, uh, they seem to have a, uh, a nut right here but the one that I got with flying bear didn't have that nut so it's a six millimeter uh, nut which I uh, put in there um, I was also having trouble with this um, yeah, I think I mentioned this Allen screw uh, retaining. Um, I was, after some trial and error, I, was, I wasn't I was able to use um, the Allen key that was given with me because it, it seemed like the, that screw was stripped. But I ended up uh, being able to use like a, a flathead screwdriver and going at it going in on the like the diagonal or the and then unscrewing it so um yeah like i wish it would focus i probably zoomed in too close no oh that's better so i was able to go in there and tighten that down or loosen it up with the screw, with the flathead instead of um, and it doesn't yeah it, it gets in there a ways but then it just spins freely it's like wow that's kind of shitty so I don't even know if this thing is really needed um, it seems kind of like um, useless if if you have this um, if you have this nut on the on the threads then that this retaining thing seems kind of useless or pointless um and as you can see there uh when you're trying to put that filament in you might you have some gap there and so if you're going to do uh if you're going to do uh flexible filament you might want to choke up on that uh screw so it gets right up there so loosen up loosen that uh that nut and you know sc screw that uh this 
threaded uh, channel for the filament all the way up there. That's to be something good. Also, well, you got a big nothing right there. So maybe put something in there. But, no. All right, so finally got this thing uh, disassembled and uh, getting this thing. I'm calling it a thing now. Um, on and off of this uh, this uh, carriage, yeah, it's got the two uh, screw screws there. But you know, once this thing is on, and you got the and you've got the heater block down here, and it, it's kind of so so. It's not that easy getting uh, the Allen key up there and Allen wrench and um, turning that stuff. So um, I did ask uh, Flying Bear about some maybe buying another one of these, um, so I could. What I seem to have done is taken my whole assembly apart there and like maybe I can slide it off and then slide it back in. But um, I'm left with the issue of uh, belt tension, and that's kind of. Uh, of a thing <laughs> so then I was like okay so is there some kind of quick release for belt and and retensioning system and I was researching that oh so yeah it's something to keep in mind um, and I want to get back into printing because I did print out I'm all over the place with this video I did print out the screw and nut thing and I think the if you're following the Twitter um, that came out pretty well uh, using PLA, so I think the printer works well. Um, so I want to print out some parts for um, for maybe modifying this uh, belt tensioning thing. I was thinking right, making some printing out some kind of belt tensioner, yeah, something like that, but. Um, and also I have to print the mount for the laser so I need it back into uh, printer form uh, before I can even do the laser stuff because right now that laser this laser is not sitting on that um, on that um, on that carriage there so so that's where I'm at now. Uh, I did end up buying some lithium grease. Uh, where is the can of grease? I don't know. It was here earlier. But probably shoved it oh, here it is. So I did pick up some grease armor. Grease. Yeah, so if you ever need some lithium grease and you're in Japan, please tell them you need uh, Richiamu. Richium. Like unobtainium. But only closer because you can reach it. Yeah, pa. Yeah, I'm going to uh, try to uh, put the laser on there and then do so, convert the 3D printer into a laser engraver. And one of the reasons why I got this this specific printer was because of this metal piece right here. And hopefully in some video I have already shot, I'll show you the whole, mm, hopefully. Um, yeah, and I got to show you what the updates I did to the, to the, yeah, there's a bunch of update stuff. Um, so right now it's back into the, into, I put, started doing the, the wiring on the cables. Um, I've got, uh, I still got to do the wiring down here and put the lid on it. Um, but I've got another ramps, um, board coming because the screw terminals on that one aren't, uh, tightening down. So they sent me out at a replacement and so I'm waiting for that to rewire the stuff and then put that, that on there. Um, <coughs> I'm still not really sure where, where I'm going to put this, um, power supply now on top seems pretty good and then I got to put it up over there so that one has a ground on it so I want to do that and 
Also, another thing I've got coming in the mail is a is a glass bed for this thing. And the reason why I have it set up here and is because um, this aluminum bed, which is nice, it's but it's starting to sag. And yeah, so there was a little bit of a sag right in there. And what that means is that this end will, when I do the bed leveling, this end is higher than this other end over here. Well, this end is higher than the sag, and then it goes back up. So I got a little dip, and then when I did a test print on this thing, um, it um, it didn't really contact the the bed. Um, so. I'm going to get the glass bed, which I ordered off of Amazon. Uh, I think it was uh, the uh, borosilicate uh, type of bed. Um, and the only one that I could find here shipping to Japan was um, like 20, 17 bucks, I think. It's not that bad. Um, I did check AliExpress for some glass beds. And they were like, oh, we've got glass beds for like maybe $9. But it's going to take you about 20 something days, maybe a month to to get to Japan. <clears throat> so I went ahead and paid the extra whatever, 7 bucks to get the faster shipping, free shipping here and tomorrow. I'll get the glass bed tomorrow. And, um, yeah, and another issue that I have is, um, so I've got this nice little mount here, this, uh, carriage here, but I don't have a mount for the laser. Ping pong ping. So I'm going to have to print out a mount for the laser to sit on, or I can cut it out of, um, acrylic. Which I might end up doing there because I, hey, yeah, I got some. Can you see that? No, not really because it's friggin' acrylic. And I've got some old some sheets of acrylic and they're, they're pretty thick and stuff. Um, yeah, and I think I can just use my Dremel <coughs> to cut out uh, something out of there and then I can drill or mount or clamp it down the laser onto there. And then I got a laser engraver, yay! So that's something good. Um, and once I get that going, then I will um, show you how to how I did that. All right. <clears throat> so I'm wearing green glasses, so I can't see very well. And that that I I ran it. I adjusted the end stops and I got the thing going and I think the g-code was a little slow because it made it's, it cut the paper it goes a pretty nice circle so I'm gonna try to do it again with this um, piece of wood and see how that goes so I set the um, offsets for the for the um, for the um, the auto home offsets so that it was kind of back over here and it seems to be so I'm gonna reset it now set it to auto home let's see oh crap that's gonna go all the way up it's not bad but I need to reset the Set it to about eight uh, centimeters off the laser thing, and that seemed to be good enough to cut paper. So, if if I hit um, print from SD card, it's going to um, it's going to print like right up on the thing. So I want to move it. 
Well, let's see what happens. Well, no. That's not what I wanted. I stopped that. Fan speed off. You have to turn that thing off. I don't know. Okay. And the. I don't think you caught that. So when I turn the fan off, fan speed off, it turns off. So down here. Oh crap. Alright, yeah, so let's see. So I'm gonna go to temperature. Control temperature. And I'm going to adjust the fan speed and turn it up. I'm going to turn it up all the way. And you're going to see that the lights, the laser is going to turn on. I wish I could see because I'm wearing these green glasses. Okay, so I'll try again. Temperature. Fan speed. It up. And then it turns on. So we don't really want it on right now. We're going to turn it off, go back to zero. Oh, there it is. Okay, and so I'm going to do the offset and then run it again and see if I can get a logo going. Going to main. There's the thing. And I'm going to do the prepare, move the Z down. Should be about eighty, about a. Let's see where that leaves it. That's way too far. So we want it about um, eight or nine centimeters off of it. So that's way too far down. I guess I just go back to zero. Oh yeah, that's right. So this is around eight and a half centimeters. Oh no, it's actually a little bit lower. Oh, because I changed the, the the wood. I added the wood. I'm going to go about 9 centimeters down. There we go. Okay. And there we go. Back to the bear. Set off to it. Yeah. Alright, so now that thing is set to that distance. Now I'm going to print on the SD card. And see what happens. Yeah, it's cutting. It's lasering out. And it's smoking. So that thing is burning. Alright. I gotta charge the battery. Alright, so I got the...
All right, so I got the the laser engraver up and running, the laser, and I converted my flying bear um, into a laser engraver. Um, right now, what I'm printing is uh, the an image of my men on my helmet on my armor for Kendall. Um, and how I took this picture was I used uh, Adobe um, Capture and which kind of converts pictures into uh, uh, <coughs> scalable vector graphics, SVGs and then you can take that image and then put it into Inkscape and then run the run the um, the laser G code maker extension and um, then you can laser engrave stuff so we're gonna let that go for a while and yeah, it's just it's burning I'm not really I'm just eyeballing this stuff right now I'm and I don't even want to look at the, the image because it's it's a laser so I got my green glasses on and um, all right, I'll show you what it looks like at the end. All right, so it's fucking 2 a.m. And I just finished engraving this thing. I don't know how long it took. But, uh, yeah. Uh, I've set it up like eight, nine uh, centimeters off of the off of the bed and measuring from the top of this thing and it printed out uh, pretty well it was pretty easy to do so <laughs> I say it was pretty easy but it's two in the morning and I've been fiddling with this thing um, but after you know all the fiddle fiddly things then you're all right well now I can do it so I think that came out well and uh, I'm not really sure how to do like uh, gradations and stuff like that but um, that's another thing to learn. So yeah tomorrow I'm going to go over to the to the um, hardware store and try to find a better um, mounting bit for that thing. Uh, right now I I like the I, I want to keep the um the extruder on here and then just um have the laser maybe in the front or somewhere um it's not really that heavy at all so that means maybe I'm going to have to lift the whole um lift the whole uh mount of the of the extruder up and then maybe do something coming out or I'm not really sure. Uh, I don't have a end stop for. Um, I do have an extra end stop, but I, I'm not really sure where I'm going to place that. So something I still need to figure out. Um, yeah. So this whole uh, adding the laser to the to the carriage works, and it works because. <laughs> I got video it works but it, yeah it's uh some tinkering a little bit tinkering and I'm out of alcohol look at that <coughs> so tomorrow I'm gonna get the the bed um, the new uh, glass bed the uh, what uh, uh, boro silicate something bad and I'm gonna print a case for the laser right now I just tape the laser onto the frame like that probably not the good thing to do but it's not touching anything so it's just kind of floating there <coughs> and I'm gonna have to find a place because the laser also goes into this fan over here and um, yeah, so I'm gonna 
I'll have to figure out a way to quickly swap out the fans. Or, I don't know, I mean, if it's just those two screws on the screw terminal, then um, that's not that bad. Um, yeah, I just have to, when I want to do laser engraving, I'll just have to screw in those two um, uh, power, the power in the ground for the laser, and um, yeah, that should be it. Just swap out the fan. Um, I think I'm going to, the way I'm going to set it up, hopefully I can just leave the, everything all assembled on here, um, so I don't have to disassemble stuff. Uh, you see, I had a little, um, drawer L, um, mount here for a, a sliding drawer. And I uh, just kind of put that on there. Um, it's not it's not really that great. I think a better uh, way would be to have like something like this. Um, this little L. Um, and that actually is perfectly space those holes are perfectly spaced to go right there like on the on a NEMA motor and um, which I have right here so and so they're um, perfectly spaced for that um, motor oh, Try to do it with one hand, didn't work, but yeah. <clears throat> and uh, I, I had to, I, the problem with this setup here now is that I had to um, take the end stop here, that which was placed properly for the, for the printer, I took it out and put it on, uh, pulled it a little forward so that it would trigger when the side of the laser hit it and so yeah now that's kind of there um so i'm gonna i want to put that back to where it's supposed to be and um yeah move the laser somewhere somewhere else but yay it's working as intended. And I need some more drink and drink. Okay, two All right, guys. Talk to you guys later. Come by. Bye bye.